into a spell. Hello, my friends. You're looking so lovely today. So tell me if this describes you. You love Zelda. You loved Breath of the Wild. You want to get more backstory on Hyrule and the champions and Link's defeat and Ganon's imprisonment and all that. You think Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity looks like an incredible opportunity to finally get that backstory, but you are just not interested in playing a Warriors game. If that's you, then I absolutely get it. The Warriors, or Musou series, is well known, but it's also fairly niche. It features a very particular style of gameplay that on the surface appears to focus mainly on taking out scores of baddies. And I must admit, it's not unreasonable to be wary. I myself was extremely skeptical of Warriors games for many a year. They were always just the kill tons and tons of bad guys games, and the marketing materials for each game don't do a ton to challenge that idea. It wasn't until Nintendo gave me a copy of Fire Emblem Warriors that I finally gave the series a try, though I didn't really know what elements were normal for the series and what was there only thanks to the crossover, and I didn't play the game for very long. It wasn't until they slapped some Zelda characters in there that I became seriously interested in giving a Warriors game a try, and even then I waited until I could get my hands on a convenient Switch version. And honestly, what I found in the first Hyrule Warriors surprised the heck out of me. And because of that, I'm here to tell you that there's a chance you've got the wrong idea about Warriors games. And if you give Age of Calamity a try, if you're anything like me, you might just find yourself surprised as well. Or you won't. Maybe you'll hate it, I don't know. Mayonnaise is the best thing in the world, and some people hate that, so... <laughs> Who even knows, man? I'm not gonna lie to you. Yes, beating tons of baddies is a big part of the Warriors games. It is absolutely part of the appeal. And I certainly get why. Plunging into massive crowds and knocking them all back at once feels absolutely great. It's a very tactile thing. It's very empowering. I mean, does anyone remember 99 Nights? Those games were basically based entirely around the idea of slaughtering hundreds of foes at a time. The sequel even promising... One million troops. Wow. It was a pretty silly series. I don't know anyone who even played them all the way through, but back when I worked at Game Crazy, everyone wanted to play the demo for the first game again and again because it's just stupid fun. It's nice to feel so godlike in a game every once in a while. The Warriors games absolutely draw upon that idea to a great degree. And it's easy to see from footage that another part of the fun is unleashing all sorts of crazy combos. Even here in Age of Calamity, you can see these over the top kill animations. And I'll admit, this style of hack and slash, tons of baddies, crazy combos gameplay isn't going to be for everyone. I don't generally like these kinds of games at all, in fact. When the whole game is nothing but pure, frantic combat, I'm really not interested. I need more to sink my teeth into. But then why did I really like Hyrule Warriors? And why am I incredibly excited to play Age of Calamity? Because here's the secret. That's not all there is to the gameplay. It looks like a very shallow experience, and I see a lot of people saying as much. But it's not as shallow as those people might think. That's because a battle in a Warriors game doesn't just come down to its combat. It also comes down to strategy. In a sense, these games are also military tactics games. And this is the part that I didn't really understand until I dug into the gameplay myself. On any given map, there will be lots of keeps or forts or whatever you want to call them. These produce units for whatever team owns them, so naturally claiming them as your own is one of your biggest goals. You do this by killing the enemy soldiers within, and usually when you kill enough of them, you've got to take out an enemy captain as well. Keeps belonging to different teams can have a very big effect on the battlefield, so it's it's often up to you to decide where you should be putting your focus. There are all sorts of story elements in any given stage that progress throughout the course of battle and change based on your actions. You'll be tasked with taking out a certain keep, or a certain number of keeps, or a certain enemy commander, or you'll have to escort someone or something to a keep. The whole entire experience emulates an actual battle in many ways, and this means sometimes you'll find yourself surprised by ambushes, or boss appearances, or sudden changes to your victory conditions. Knowing where you should should be at any given time and deciding how to best use your time is the name of the game. Even more, sometimes you can even give orders to your units using the map or switch back and forth between warriors, so there's even more strategy potential there. And the original Hyrule Warriors had staple Zelda items like bombs in the hookshot that you could use to reach new areas of a map. I'm not going to tell you that the strategy element is more important than the combat element. Balancing both is the entire point. You've got to know what to do and where to go and who to take down 
down, but you've also got to be a good enough fighter to make it all happen when the time comes. And the funny thing is, even though this series is known for letting you take out all these baddies, that specifically isn't even the most important part of combat. Very often, you'll take out small foes just to build up your combo meter so you can perform your giant attacks on commanders and bosses. There's a whole stagger system where you've got to wear down a bigger foe's defense before you can do a great big special move and deal tons of damage. So even that takes some good timing and practiced inputs. Even outside of battle, these games try to give you lots to do and think about, and Age of Calamity looks to be no exception. There's a whole weapon crafting and upgrading system for you to tear into, and if it's anything like the first Hyrule Warriors, which I suspect it is, you'll be able to level up your warriors and give them all sorts of stat boosts and new abilities. There's a pretty meaty RPG system here, which makes the hack and slash gameplay all the more satisfying. Completing a battle and leveling up your character, then jumping back into another battle so you can try out a new attack or a new weapon is incredibly fun. It's a very engaging feedback loop. Gosh, an Age of Calamity is apparently going to have a whole cooking system as well, so who even knows how meals and elixirs are going to affect battles? At this point, we don't know every mode and feature on offer, but there's a fine chance Age of Calamity will provide you with a very hefty amount of content. The first game had this adventure mode thing where you move around a little board, fighting and collecting items to unlock more tiles and more battles, and you could easily sink hundreds of hours into it if you let yourself. Will Age of Calamity have extra content like this, or will it consist of nothing but straightforward canonical missions? I don't know, but again, I would not be surprised if they once more gave us a lot of supplemental content. And I know this next stuff isn't really worth talking about too much because it's all out on the table for you already, but mention it, I must. Age of Calamity just looks like it's got so much to offer fans of Breath of the Wild. It's got a canonical story that finally reveals what happened a hundred years ago. It uses Hyrule's actual world map and undestroyed versions of its various locales. I know I want to see how Hyrule Castle Town and Fort Hateno and all sorts of other places looked before they were decimated. I want to experience the actual battles that created the world we explored in Breath of the Wild. It was one thing to play through what was essentially a fan fiction in the original Hyrule Warriors, but this time the game was built with the help of the actual Zelda devs. It looks and feels like a real Zelda game. Instead of looking like a Warriors game injected with Zelda elements, it looks more like a Zelda game injected with Warriors elements. And I I can't possibly stress the importance of this one concept enough. For me, it's all about the cool factor. Have you ever wanted to play as Zelda in a canon Zelda game? How about an awesome Goron warrior or a Gerudo? You can play as a super cool Gerudo warrior that shoots lightning in a canon Zelda story! Ugh, the original Hyrule Warriors sold me on its cool factor. The idea of playing as Skull Kid and using a great fairy to crash the Majora's Mask Moon down on Zant was just too incredible. It was the kind of Zelda awesomeness I'd only ever dreamed of. But now, we can get that coolness again, and this time it's for real. It's not quite as over-the-top and fanfiction-y, of course, but that's exactly why it's so perfect. This war really happened in the Zelda timeline. These champions really existed. The whole ordeal was so cool, and now we get to see it all for ourselves. I've seen plenty of people worried that Age of Calamity still goes a little too over-the-top, thus not really meshing with the pre-established canon. The champions were great fighters, but were they this great? If Link can kill this many baddies this fast, how did they manage to take him down? And was Zelda actually able to use Sheikah runes back then? Were the Sheikah towers even accessible? If you ask me though, getting hung up on these details is like not seeing the forest for the trees. We don't actually know a lot about what went on back then. As I <laughs> complained about in my review, the story snippets in Breath of the Wild didn't reveal much. I'm not willing to judge if this game strays too far from the established lore until I see it all unfold myself. Also, a few continuity issues aren't gonna stop me from enjoying an experience like this. At the end of the day, fun wins out over everything. Ultimately, the point I'm trying to make is that you shouldn't count out Age of Calamity just because it's a Warriors game. There will be more to the gameplay than a lot of people realize, and it looks like it's gonna have a ton of stuff to offer people who loved Breath of the Wild. I'm actually surprised that Nintendo hasn't focused more on showing off its strategy elements, actually. They had a great chance in the recent Treehouse footage, but they really just showed the basic gameplay. And at the time of this recording, they still haven't done as much as I would like to dispel the idea that it will be nothing more than a mindless 
Ghost Hack and Slash. Now, I don't want to give anyone the wrong idea here. It's still a fairly particular style of gameplay. There's strategy stuff to supplement the combat, but in order to enjoy the game, you do need to enjoy that combat. I managed to enjoy it in Hyrule Warriors because of everything else holding it up. The strategy, the RPG stuff, basically everything else in the game. But even then, I'll admit, it could get pretty repetitive. Watch my review if you want to know my full thoughts, but I did think the game was fun, but also pretty grindy and samey after a while. The formula really isn't for everybody, but I honestly think that Age of Calamity has tremendous potential. If they can give us the same satisfying feedback loop present in most Warriors games, but with an extra level of polish and a more interesting campaign, this could prove to be one of the most addictive games in the Switch's library. Despite its flaws, I got really into playing the first game. And if they give the formula a little love, I can easily see myself sinking dozens and dozens of hours into Age of Calamity, if not hundreds. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to tell you to blindly buy the game even if it doesn't look very fun to you. As with the Pikmin PSA I did recently, I realize how silly it is to go to bat for multi-billion dollar corporations. I just wanted to make sure that you've got the right idea about this game. I hate to think that anyone might miss out on such a cool experience because they don't quite know the extent of what a Warriors game is, as was once the case with me. So there you have it, consider my job done. And with my job done, I shall bid you adieu. But first, have I convinced any of you to give the game a second look? Or does it look just as shallow and boring as ever? Because it's totally fine if you feel that way. Like I said, it's not going to be for everyone. Whatever the case, head down to the comments and give us your thoughts on Age of Calamity, on Warriors games, and most importantly, on mayonnaise! I don't care who won that Splatfest rerun! Mayonnaise forever! Mayonnaise! 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 The goddess Mayonetta shines down upon us all!